Hello, everyone. Welcome to session two of LTEC 676. When we left off last week, we were talking about what an educator should know about educational technology. And to help frame that discussion, we talked about society as a group of people who live in a defined geographic area and who interact with one another and share a common culture. We also talked about the number of social ills or social problems such as poverty, privacy, inequality, and discrimination, and how certain institutions or initiatives such as education and technology have been created and maintained to help address some of these problems. Now, as you probably noticed from the week one reading, is that all of these forces, of course, are interacting and pulling and pushing against one another. Now, in the first couple of weeks of the course, we are going to be focusing more on the first half of the course title, the educational technology. And in particular, we're going to be focusing on that word technology. And this is really going to set us up to be start thinking about the social and ethical issues in education educational technology. But before we can do that, we really have to have a firm grasp on what is technology in general and educational technology in particular. So with that in mind, we're going to begin our first theme of the course, which is the nature of technology. Now, why would we be interested in the nature of technology? Well, the answer to that question is it's part of a meaningful technology education. In other words, if we want to have a solid foundation, a meaningful technology education, there are a number of things that we need to know about as students of social and ethical issues in educational technology. So what are some of the things we need to know in order to have a meaningful technology education? Well, of course, we need to know how to use technology. And to be honest, a lot of schools are pretty good at helping students learn how to use technology. However, they're not so good in some of the subsequent areas, such as what technology is, how and why technology is developed, and how individuals and society direct, react to, and are sometimes unwittingly changed by technology. So a meaningful technology education is going to encompass all four areas of understanding. And this brings us to the nature of technology. So what is technology? Well, a lot has been written about the nature of technology. And here's a famous book in 2009 by Brian Author, who argued that technology, in fact, is one of the most completely known parts of the human experience. Yet of its essence, the deep nature of its being, we know little. And Arthur argues that there are three meanings of technology. The first meaning is of individual technologies, which are a means to fulfilling a human purpose. The second meaning is what he calls bodies of technology, such as semiconductors or robotics. And he argues these are an assemblage of practices and components. And the third meaning of technology is the entire collection of devices and engineering practices available to a culture. Now, it's important to understand technology at these three levels. So when we're talking about technology, we need to be specific as to what level of technology we're talking about. An individual technology, a body of technology, or the entire collection of devices and practices available to a culture. Now, this brings us to 10 concepts related to the nature of technology. Now, the first concept is that technology is broad. It includes artifacts and the processes that created those artifacts. Examples of technology include, among other things, tools, machines, things, symbols, objects, and techniques. So some questions related to that concept that we could continuously ask ourselves is, how is Google a form of technology? How is democracy a social technology? How is fire a technology? You could fill in the blank with whatever you want, but you should challenge yourself and ask, how is this thing, this object, this process, this technique, how is it or is it not a technology? 
The second concept related to the nature of technology is that technology is developed for a particular purpose, but its impact may reach beyond its original purpose. When contemplating that idea, some questions we can ask ourselves include, for what purpose was blank technology developed? For what other purposes might it be applicable? Our third concept is the idea that biases are inherent in technology. So we continuously want to ask ourselves, how does the purpose and limitations of blank technology predispose us to employ it in particular ways, thus impacting decisions and other actions? The fourth concept related to the nature of technology is that technology is a Faustian bargain. When a new technology emerges, something is gained and something is lost. And we have to challenge ourselves to ask what positive outcomes occur by employing this technology versus the negative outcomes. The fifth concept is that technology changes human behavior. So we can ask ourselves, how has blank technology changed human behavior in ways that were anticipated versus ways that were not considered? Those are important questions. The sixth concept related to the nature of technology is that technology changes human thinking. How has blank technology changed the way humans think? Concept seven, communication technologies impact privacy, personal space, and quiet time for reflection. And here are several questions we can ask ourselves, such as what has been gained and what has been lost with communication technologies? The eighth concept is that technology promotes a positive, forward-looking mentality that suppresses a balanced and accurate examination of its actual impact. Some questions related to that concept that we can ask ourselves. The phrase technological process is commonly used. Why do we not have an equally common phrase for the downsides of technology? Concept number nine, the process by which technology is developed is linked to and thus constrained by already existing technologies. So we can ask ourselves, how is this classroom interactive whiteboard similar to chalkboards and whiteboards? Why do you think this is the case? And concept 10 is that technology influences human values. An example, how have cell phones altered family values? How has technology altered relationships? Taken together, these are 10 concepts related to the nature of technology, and I would argue these concepts are central to what an educator needs to know about educational technology. I want to end by talking a little bit about our professional views on technology. So 18 people responded to the questionnaire. So let's take a look at some of the results. Now, one of the items near the end of the questionnaire asked you to indicate how often you integrate computer technologies into your professional activities. Now, as you can see here, 14 people said all the time, that's 77.8% of 18. Two people said almost always, one person said frequently, and one person said occasionally. So this tells us a little bit about who's in the class from a technical perspective, as does statement 18, which asks you to determine your level of proficiency with computer technologies. And as you can see here in the blue, five people said they were expert or just over 27%. Nine people identified as advanced users of computer technologies, that's half the class. Three people identified as average, and one person said they were a newcomer. Interesting. So now that we have a little bit of background, let's talk about some of the results of the questionnaire. Recall that we agreed or disagreed with 33 statements about the use of technology in education using a seven-point scale. One was strongly disagree, and seven was strongly agree. So what was the average for all of the items on the questionnaire? Well, the class average was 4.31 with a standard deviation of 1.10. In case you haven't thought about this in a while, a standard deviation is a measure of the amount of variation or dispersion in the responses. Now, the person with the lowest average score for all of the items had an average of 2.64. And you can contrast that with the person who had the highest score, I won't name any names, but that person had a score of 4.85.
So between the lowest and the highest average score, that's a difference of 2.21 points on a seven point scale. So you can see here, there are some differences in opinion, but we're more or less hovering around the middle of this seven point scale. So you're probably wondering what statements did the class agree and disagree with the most? Well, let's take a look and keep in mind that this is based on 18 responses. So there were actually two statements that tied for being the most agreed upon by the class. The first statement was number 18, which read, the use of technology in education enhances my professional development. So the class average was 6.33 in terms of agreement for that particular statement. The second statement that we largely agreed upon was number seven, which read, the use of technology in education is a valuable instructional tool. So there was a lot of agreement around those two particular statements. Now, the statement that the class disagreed with the most was statement number 17. And interestingly, this is the same statement that people disagreed with the most last year as well. And that statement read, the use of technology in education is unnecessary because students will learn computer skills on their own outside of school. And so for the most part, folks disagreed with that particular sentiment. And in fact, much of the reading that we will do this semester will reinforce your or disagreement with that statement. Now let's take a look at the most controversial statements on the questionnaire. I've selected the top five here to show you, and this is based on the statements that had the highest variation in their responses. In other words, I've ranked these based on each item's standard deviation. So the fifth most controversial statement was that the use of technology in education is effective if teachers participate in the selection of computer technologies to be integrated. The average was pretty high, 5.17, but as shown, the standard deviation was considerable at 1.79. So people tend to not align in their thinking about this particular statement. The same is true for the fourth most controversial statement, which stated the use of technology in education is successful only if teachers have access to a computer at home. You can see kind of a middle of the road average 3.89, but we're seeing a big standard deviation of 1.81 related to that statement. The third most controversial statement was that the use of technology in education could reduce the number of teachers employed in the future. We see an average of 3.67 and again, the standard deviation of almost two points around that average. The second most controversial statement was that the use of technology in education eases the pressure on me as a professional. Again, we have a middle of the road average at 3.89, but again, an increasing standard deviation. People were not so aligned in whether or not technology eases the pressure on us as individuals. And then the number one most controversial statement was that the use of technology in education is difficult because some students know more about computers than many teachers do. And you can see our level of agreement with that was below three at 2.96. But again, we're seeing a lot of variation, a lot of controversy around that particular statement. So there you have it, folks, the five most controversial statements about the use of technology in education, according to this particular questionnaire. Now, you're probably wondering, why did we do this? Well, the idea was to illustrate that even among a small group of graduate students already interested in learning design and technology, there can be substantial differences in terms of our views on technology as it relates to teaching and learning. With this premise established, we'll begin to explore some of the underlying reasons why there may be such varied opinions about the role of technology in education. Okay, everyone, we're out of time for today. Have a great week, and I'll see you in Canvas.